Alrighty, welcome to another Karlov Manor Draft. I've been enjoying this format a fair amount, and uh, it is the format of the Pro Tour, so i got to get my reps in. Plus, uh, yeah, we're still a lot to discover here, including Lamplight Phoenix. This is a pretty good card to start with. 3-mana, three 3-3 three, three flying. Already feeling pretty good about that. And when it dies, if you have four casting cost of stuff in your graveyard, you just get to bring it right back tapped. So a great card and certainly better than the next best card, which honestly don't even know what it is. Unscrupulous Agent, Culvert, Ambusher, who knows. But we're slamming Lamplight Phoenix to start with. And immediately taking probably Shock or Galvanize. Uh, they're both pretty close. Uh... I'd like Galvanize just because two-mana deal three, I think, is about on par with one-mana deal two, especially in a format with lots of two-twos. But the fact that this can go go upstairs for five, well, not upstairs, not to a player, but it can hit a creature for five when you've cracked a clue is a pretty big upside. So I like Galvanize over Shock. Plus, it's more evidence for the Lamplight Phoenix. That is a pretty minor effect. But starting with a great red rare and a solid red common is not bad, though the next... <laughs> the best card in this pack is a Wisp Drinker, so we're not really that close to being able to take that. I'm just looking at this living conundrum and thinking like, well, you know, the last time I put a draft up, I did this. How bad is it to do it again? I, honestly, I should probably take Crime Stopper Sprite or Furtive Courier. Courier is kind of nice at filling the graveyard for Phoenix and with Galvanize. So draws you an additional card here. I think I will take the Furtive Courier. I, I, don't, I don't mind that card, and I like Red Blue quite a bit. Ooh, now there's a case of the Filched Falcon. One mana make a clue. That's a pretty decent starting position. And if you end up with three artifacts in play, you can then sack this and bay three to make a, a non-creature artifact a 4-4 four, four flyer. So I like that more than Concealed Weapon or Scapegoat. And I think that we've got a pretty nice setup here. Oh, wow. There's a Harried Dronesmith, which makes a 1-1 Thopter every turn. Pretty good with Galvanic or a gear, the Gear Drake because... Uh, that keys off artifact sacrificing, but I actually think I'm just going to take shock. One mana removal spell is a one mana removal spell, and I think I'd rather take that. <laughs> Another living conundrum, and of course the kill, but honestly, I think I should just take deduce, though. Deduce is very good in this kind of deck, and it works with Case of the Filched Falcon, it works with cheap removal, and it's just like a pretty high rate card in general. So we're doing more of the blue-red clues thing than the living uh, conundrum thing. But I suppose if the other one, if the first one comes back, that this last one, I don't think well. There's only like 13 cards in these packs somehow. If the first one comes back, then uh, maybe go that direction. But, oh man, picking up these late deduces, this is this is looking perfect. I, I like where this is going. And if, if I got to draft blue-red a lot in this format, I'll be pretty happy. Oh, and now there's a reasonable doubt. Another card which I like, counter a spell unless they pay two. You can also suspect a creature. And with double deduce, it's just you just leave mana up. You're fine casting either one of them. And uh, this is looking kind of like a perfect blue-red deck. Case of the Fil Fal Filched Falcon with double deduce. The Courier and the Lamplight Phoenix is nice threes. And then Shock and Galvanize as removal here. Huh. Agent, I think, is pretty good. I don't think Benthic Criminologists is great. I might just take Case of the Shattered Pact in case. Probably not main deck it, but if, if I end up wanting to splash a card, it's it's a fine way to do that. And then here, Burden of Proof is fantastic in blue white when you have tons of detectives. I guess I have none so far. I'm going to take Sudden Setback. I think Sudden Setback is fine. All right, I will take a Living Conundrum here for free. I'll just and take these cards. All right. Let's go. Next pick. Ooh. Ezrim Agency Chief is so busted, but it's a double white card. Five mana, five, five flying. Makes two clues, and you can get all sorts of abilities. Tristani is also a very good card. Hmm. The best blue-red card is, like, Gadget Technician, which is pretty good. I don't think I'm supposed to take a double white card here and throw away three good red cards, effectively. Because it did feel like this... Because the blue cards I have also work really nicely with the red cards. All right, I'm going to take Gadget Technician here and, you know, kind of give a gift to whoever I'm passing to. I just don't think uh, taking Ezrum there was particularly reasonable. Here, I actually do like Splashing Curious Cadaver sometimes because you get to get this back a lot. It's good with all of your loot effects. But Mistway Spy is also fine. One mana, one one flyer is not that bad in this format, honestly. And then that you can flip this up and get a clue or two. I think Mistway Spy works out just fine here. 
Next pack, oh, another Galvanize. I'm gonna take that over Gadget Technician, but I'm pretty happy with how this is going. I mean, we're drafting just a very consistent, solid deck, and I love the combination of a bunch of card draw with, with like the deduces, the Mistway Spy, the, even the case of the Filched Falcon is nice. Courier is gets some card selection alongside Shock, Reasonable Doubt, Double Galvanize, Sudden Setback as interaction. So it all works out pretty nice. And oh, there's a Forensic Gadget here. So whenever you cast an artifact, you get a clue and your clues cost one less to activate. Um, the problem is I don't have any actual artifacts. So it's basically a three mana two three, the clues are cheaper or out cold, which taps two things and makes you a clue. Honestly, I think it's kind of sad. Sorry, Forensic Gadget here, but I think out cold is just gonna be better for me. And then now maybe I'll take a Drone Smith here since this isn't a shock anymore, and uh, I think the Gleaming Gear Drake w does make me want Drone Smith. Plus, Drone Smith, there's other artifact combos I can get. I think that one's worth taking. And then Eliminate the Impossible is very good. So is Reasonable Doubt. I think I'll take an Eliminate the Impossible. Just once you get a bunch of creatures into play, casting Eliminate is a pretty good way to get an advantage in combat. And then this pack, I'm not really going to play any of these cards. So I guess I'll take the Criminologists. So... We're looking for maybe another finisher, though. Honestly, I think I will just play the Conundrum in my deck. I feel like this deck is getting close to enough long game card draw stuff that I could consider it. I don't know. I've had these blue, white, and blue, red decks that make a bunch of clues get pretty low on deck size. Oh, and there's a second Conundrum. All right, you know what? We're going to run this back. I, I see no reason not to at this point, and uh, I actually feel like this, this could be a plan worth pursuing. And then here there's consigned to oblivion. Two mana bounces but any non-land permanent. Five mana they discard two cards you cast from your graveyard. I guess I'll take this, but I don't really know how I'm gonna cast it from my graveyard. Oh, I'll take a cadaver as well. Maybe there's something there in terms of a black splash. I guess technically I could play the crocodile, though. I don't know how likely that is. Demand answers actually could be could be good. Just more card draw slash tearing through your deck sort of deal. But splashing Cadaver and the back half of Consign could be okay. Oh, Gravestone Strider's not a zero either. Reenact the Crime, unfortunately. Unfortunately is. I will take Case of the Burning Masks, though. Three mana, Sorcery Speed, deal three to an opposing creature. But if you can get three sources to deal damage, then you solve this. And uh, you get to crack it for another card, which is pretty nice. So I'll take that over Harry Dronesmith. Though, they do kind of combine. The Drone Smith makes a 1-1 that can go get a, <laughs> a point of damage in. I'm going to take out the Gravestone Strider for now. I would rather not splash if I didn't have to. Though obviously that might be impossible to avoid. Oh, and here's another Shock. Yeah, I'll, I'll happily just take another Shock over Furtive Courier. Hide in Plain Sight is also a busted card. But I think a little less busted when you're splashing it. And uh, I think Shock is just going to be excellent in this deck. So I'm happy enough to take that. <laughs> and there, there's Fuss Bother, which I think is going to be better than Cornered Crook. Crook is pretty good at, you throw a clue at anything for a, a lightning bolt, but uh, Fuss Bother getting three 1-1 one, one flyers is has been pretty good to just curve into. I guess I'll take another Galvanize over Killer Among Us, though. There was a potential green splash here. I feel like I'm pretty happy not splashing any colors, though. Could go for another card draw spell if I could pick one up. Um, eliminate the impossible versus suspicious detonation. I have a bunch of galvanized and shocks. And there's also a bubble smuggler, but I don't, I don't really feel the need for that. I think I'll just take eliminate the impossible. I think the bad rate deal for is just not something I'm super interested in. <laughs> and here's an Anzrag's Rampage. Blows up all their artifacts and you get to play a creature or something. Uh, I'll take a magnifying glass, but I am not going to be playing that one. Huh. Drag the Canal is another pretty strong card. You get, if a creature died, which is pretty easy to maneuver, you get you end up getting a 2-2, two, two, gain 2, surveil 2, and investigate. Yeah, I don't really care much for Rift Burst Hellion, so I'll take that and maybe I'll splash some of these black cards. Night Drinker Moro is not really one of them, I don't think. It's just not that easy to splash, but let's see. So if I wanted to splash black, I could play Gravestone Strider. Mm, <laughs> a bunch of chalk outlines here, but they don't really do much for me. I don't think reenact the crime is good either. I guess lumbering laundry could be okay, but so if I wanted to splash, I, I would ooh, bubble smuggler. I'll take so many chalk outlines. I would have to play case of the shattered pact and gravestone strider most likely. 
I'll take a gamble for, for vault damage. Okay. So taking a look at this deck, I feel like I have enough blue and red cards that there's no real strong need to splash here. This is 41, and I'm sure it's not going to be too hard to cut a card here. Bubble Smuggler is really a three drop. Reasonable doubt, demand answers, two eliminates, two deduce, two shock, out cold, sudden setback. Honestly, Harry Dronesmith looks a little weak, but I guess is good with, oh, I can sack a, a token to demand answers and it gives me an extra damage source for case of the burning masks. I mean, that's not crazy. Do I cut eliminate the impossible? Do I just cut the bubble smuggler? I don't have very many creatures in my deck. Bubble Smuggler doesn't seem like it actually does too much for me. All right, I'm going to try this. I, I kind of like the idea here. Oh, Mistway Spy is also good with the Harry Dronesmith. All right, Dronesmith seems good enough for me. All right, let's get in there with another blue-red double living conundrum deck, which is very strange. It's like, you know, if I had a nickel for every time I had a double living conundrum deck, well, I guess I'd have 10 cents, but it's weird that it happened twice, as, as the saying goes. All right, time for round numero uno. Let's see, I'm on the play, and... The perfect draw. I have a one drop removal spell, which I'm probably not even going to use on turn one. And then I have a two drop, well, multiple two drop removal spells. And then I can either play a face down Mistway Spy or a Lamplight Phoenix. You kind of want to play Phoenix when you can uh, guarantee that you can, you can uh, collect enough evidence to return it. So I guess I would rather wait a turn if I can. I'd like to get use some of these removal spells first. It's just such a strong card if you can play it with enough in the graveyard to protect it from removal. Like, if I played Phoenix, then they just immediately murdered it here. I would be pretty unhappy. Yeah, I mean, I guess Slice couldn't have killed the Phoenix, but same deal. Um, I think I'm going to wait, because once I cast one of these Galvanizes, which I think there's a pretty good chance I'll be able to cast this turn, uh, yeah, I guess this costs four to sacrifice. I'll let them do their milling here, and then I'll probably galvanize that thing end of turn. Insidious Roots. Oh, wow. Whenever a creature leaves your graveyard, you get a token. All right. And then now I can play Phoenix, because worst comes to worst, I can shock in response if they try to kill it, and then I can collect evidence for four based on that. So that is my plan here. And they have one, two creatures in the graveyard. So yeah, if they get a creature out of the graveyard, then they get sliced from the shadows. All right, yeah. So I think I shock you. This gets sliced. And collect evidence four. Yoink. Okay, and then I play Harry Dronesmith and smash for four here. And then if they kill the Phoenix again, then so be it. But I feel like I'm in pretty good shape here. I just need them to play some creatures so I can utilize my two removal spells in hand. It would be actually really nice if I could cast Case of the Burning Masks here. Um, interesting. Well, what I can do here is I can attack like this. They can block the Phoenix, and then I'm going to go Case of the Burning Masks and finish off the Wisp Drinker. And then end of turn, I will have solved the case. So now I can sacrifice it. It's You only get to play the card until end of turn, so I don't want to sack it yet, but I'll probably sack it on my next turn here. They did not play a land last turn. So I'm not sure what they're up to here. Okay, they're going to... Cycle the Topiary Panther, probably get a forest here. Forest and either play a face down creature or maybe cast a removal spell. Oh, nothing, okay. Draw, uh, I'm gonna sack this now because I don't know, I could hit something that I'd wanna play ahead of time. Looks like a bunch of deduces, yeah, sure. Cast a deduce, why not? Mm-hmm, and send with these see what they do i guess maybe i wanted to wait on deduce because they could have killed the phoenix in response but i feel like if they were going to kill the phoenix they could have just done it when i was tapped out i guess we'll see what they've got all right all right they take a million i'm going to crack the clue in case i draw something to play this turn 
And kind of did. I have a shock and they're at three, or well, effective three. This feels pretty good to me then. Exile up to two cards from my graveyard. Okay. And then they gain two and draw a card. Wait, that was just a ridiculous play. Why didn't why didn't they exile one of their own creatures so you can insidious roots here? That's very odd. Um, yeah, I guess my phoenix is dead. I could have galvanized the Harry Drone Smith to bring the phoenix back, but I don't think that's a very good play. All right, crawl whip, whip cracker. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna galvanize it because I have a million galvanizes, and the shock could be uh could be lethal here. If they hadn't gained life off their uh, thing, then it would have been pretty close to it. Pass. It's lethal next turn. Yeah, they would if they hadn't gained two, then shock would have would have taken them down. All right. Well, I don't think clandestine meddler is going to do the trick. We'll see what they've got. And tunnel tipster. Okay. Uh, I'm going to galvanize the meddler here, and then they have to chump the hairy drone smith with the tunnel tipster to not die, which. They're just not going to do. Because that's not really a way to win the game, I don't think. Really? Unless they put me on the... If they put me on shock from, like, my turn one mountain, then this, that makes some sense. But I think I cast a shock already, didn't I? Yeah. Either way. All right. We got there. Lamplight Phoenix lit the path, and we are 1-0. and All right. Time for round two here. See if we can get some living conundrum action going. There we go. I'm on the play. I'll keep this. Ooh, Case of the Filched Falcon likes the Harry Drone Smith as well. I don't think I want to sack the clue on turn two here. I could play Galvanize instead. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll leave the mana up and I'll see if they play anything. But I, I kind of like getting to three on the case and I've got my land drop set up. Oh, I even drew a, a face down creature to play. Yeah, I feel all right on waiting here. Because now I have all three artifacts set up. I've got Drone Smith and uh, Technician and all that. Um, I'm just going to play the Drone Smith and hit for one here. I feel like... I feel like this is pro fine. I could Mistway Spy at some point here. Like, if I draw a land, I can go face down Spy, flip up the Gadget Technician, and then set up a really nice turn. Because this isn't once a turn or one or more creatures this is just for each creature so when you turn this face up you you can get like two three clues oh, i'll just take it there's a lot of combat tricks in the set there's no real reason to run into one right here and they have a face down card all right draw um let's make a token and attack with these. All right, and then they're gonna take it. And let's just play Lamplight Phoenix, actually. White green is not, or I mean, it's white green red, I guess. They they can kill the Phoenix, but I feel like uh, a lot of their removal is gonna be exile anyway with like makeshift binding. So I'm not gonna wait on the Phoenix. I'm just gonna cast it. And I don't think playing a Mistway Spy face up is what I wanna do here. It's close. I, I, I'm missing out at least one point of damage, but I feel like I could get like two, three clues off that this thing. We'll see. They have five mana here. I also have Galvanize as a deal five if I want to crack my clue at some point. World Souls Rage X equals three, and then they get to put a land into play. Okay. And I guess they can hit me. Sure, and they can't collect evidence. All right, land would still be pretty nice. Yeah, so go land. Um, I'm just going to turn this face up, play this face down. And the reason I want to turn that face up is because now I'm going to be able to solve the case of the filched falcon. So it is solved, and then the, the drone smith goes away. And then now, next turn, I have potentially a lot of flying damage. I can flip up Mistway Spy and make my clue into a 4-4 flyer. And that seems pretty good. Obviously, if they're tapped out, it'll be pretty easy to go for it. They've got nothing in their graveyard. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to be able to attack me anymore, I don't think. And I even get to leave mana up. 
Oh, sure, I'll take it. I don't know what's going on here, but... Definitely not interested in blocking. Okay, they played a 1-1 one, one plus a 2-2. Two, two. Interesting. All right, I'm just going to use the case of the Filched Falcon on the clue here. Uh, I'm going to flip up the Mistway Spy and send in with all the flyers here for seven in the air. And no real point in getting a fight on the ground. And then they can maybe kill the 4-4 at best, and I get three clues and hit them for three. And that's like best case scenario. I don't know how they're killing a 4-4 flyer right now. I guess make a move, the disenchant that kills a flyer or a four power, or sorry, disenchant that kills a four power creature can kill this in multiple ways. Airtight alibi. <laughs> All right, um, that's gonna probably not do it though. I guess I have a lot of clues now. I have two blockers here, so I guess they could hustle and bustle. That could That could kill me for sure. They can kill one of my blockers and they're still very far away from killing me though. So I think it will be hustle bustle. That's the plus two plus two and trampled all their creatures and they get to flip a face down creature face up. So, but I'm not overly concerned about that. If they have that, they, ha they have that. Otherwise, I feel like we're in pretty good shape. We didn't, we didn't get to live in conundrum anyone, but uh, you know, that might come at some point. Also a two five hex proofs a pretty good blocker. Oh, Aurelius Vindicator. This card is messed up, okay. So they have a six power lifelink creature and then they're gonna exile those. Yeah, no, never mind. I could definitely lose this. I need to draw a land now. Because if I draw a land, I can kill the Vindicator with uh oh, I guess I have to use demand answers. Because I have to pay the ward as well. So let's sacrifice an artifact, draw two cards. <laughs> and I didn't draw a land. Yeah, I mean, Aurelia's Vindicator is a messed up card. Um, hmm. I'm at six. Does it have trample? It doesn't have trample, at least. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna crack a clue here. I have to draw a land at some point, regardless. So I'm gonna crack this. Okay. So now I at least can eliminate the impossible to make their attack a lot less good. Well. We found a way to, to, to lose. It's the best card in the set. Or Aurelia's Vindicator is really, really tough to beat. Mm, it looks like they're fighting that. Okay. I could cast Eliminate the Impossible in response, but we're no longer racing them, and I want them to, to make a bad attack here. All right. I'll let you collect evidence if you want. And where are they going to put the counter? They're going to put it on that. So I'm taking five. So I guess I have to block here and then eliminate the impossible. Oh, and they have something else too. Sure. All right. Well, had I drawn the land to kill the Vindicator, I might have been able to win. But uh, yeah, the, the tide certainly turned. All right. One and one. All right, battling round three here. That was quite the comeback. Uh, I'm on the play. Oh, this hand's really nice on the play. We get to counter there first thing. I need to draw, I guess, a land, but I feel like it's this hand has a lot of good interaction. I could also cycle eliminate the impossible if I need to, though. I would rather not. I mean, the card's pretty powerful to cast, and if I don't need to cycle it, I won't. Uh, this, I think... I think I'll just counter this because I'm going to tap out the next couple turns here. All right. Reasonable doubt. Land. Play this face down. Play the gadget technician. Now, if I draw a land, then I can flip it and cast one of my, like cast eliminate the impossible. I guess I can cast shock either way. Case of the filched falcon. Sure. Uh, Lamplight Phoenix, huh? Um... Hmm. I think I'm just going to cast the Phoenix and hope they don't have Galvanize here. Okay, they're cracking the clue, which is good. That means it's, it's a sign they don't have a good plays and like they have nothing else to do and they don't have more artifacts to build up towards. All right, Harry Dronesmith helps, but I guess I can actually just block if they, yeah. All right, and I drew another land. So now I get to attack with both and 
if they block the gadget technician, I'll flip it up and probably cast Illuminate. I'm not gonna flip it up to deal one extra damage this turn. I don't think that's worth it because I could just cast Sudden Setback here if they like make a big play. Or I could cast Out Cold. I feel like, sure, you can hit me for three if you want. Okay. Or one. It's just doing nothing. Okay. Um, what do I want to do here? I think I'm going to just flip up the gadget technician. I feel like I feel like maybe they have something. They're going to drag the canal after sure after the uh the drone the Harry drone smith made a stopter so now they get a they get a surveil two and and a gain two and an investigate. Uh, I think I am going to shock the the two two here while we're while we're not doing anything. Okay. Furtive courier, huh? Well, I'll attack with these. And they're blocking. And I don't know what's in hand. I think casting Eliminate the Impossible here seems reasonable. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't work. And <laughs> they had their own, sure. All right, well, nothing nothing died. And I guess I'll crack the clue now, because if I draw a land, I'll play it. Yeah, all right, play the land, pass the turn. They're on. They're gonna get to flip Case of the Filched Falcon, but I have Sudden Setback to, to bounce it, which is pretty nice, whatever they make. And then, I also have out cold, which is also a pretty good way to do things. Oh, they're cracking the clue now. They, they must really want to find a play, but now they don't get to flip the case. That's a, I would say a dubious play at best there. <laughs> now I get to send with these. I'm fine to trade if that's what's happening. And then they're at 10. I'm just going to play furtive courier. I don't think leaving sudden sent back up is necessary given that I've got a, an out cold to tap down their creatures, and sudden setback works also even afterwards. Okay, deduce, sure. Yeah, I think that the way they played that last turn with the case, they, they, they could have solved the case, and they did not. Oh, interesting. All right, well, galvanize certainly changes what I'm going to do, because I'm going to draw, discard a mountain, and then galvanize to deal five to the criminologists, leaving up sudden setback. All right, I think we got this one. They're on three, and not only do I have two lethal threats, one of which is often unblockable, the other has flying. I also have a sudden setback, so I don't really see, or and an out cold, so I don't really see how they could come back from this. But who knows, my last opponent sure did. They they figured out a way in a, in a game that looked pretty unlosable. Incinerator of the Guilty, it's a good card. Not going to be close to good enough to win here, but it is a good card. Whoever deals combat damage to a player, you can collect some evidence. Destroy target tapped creature. Uh, sudden setback. You are suddenly set back. All right, attack. I'm just going to out cold this. And boom, we get living conundrum. Almost got there. <laughs> All right. Two and one, and didn't get vindicated this time, and uh, let's see how round three goes. All right. We are battling. We are on the draw with a fine hand. We've got Galvanize on two, Case on three, or Phoenix on three, and then also, if I do end up missing, I've got Demand. I can demand some answers here. Oh, where's my Shock? Oh, case of the Filched Falcon would be not a bad one to cast if I get a mana. Okay, if I'm on the draw and they have one drop, two drop, things could get a little dicey. Oh, Fester Leech is a good one too. So I think I'm just going to play a land and pass, and then if they pump Fester Leech, then I will uh, galvanize it. If not, I might wait. Oh yeah, they are pumping it. Okay, well, I'm definitely going to galvanize it then. All right, I'll take my one. And do I play the Phoenix? I think I do. It, the problem is if you have a if you don't have another good play, it's really hard for me to not want to play anything there. And I don't think playing Case of the Burning Masks to kill their one one is really what I want to do. So I'll just hope they don't have 
a murder right right away. Oh, they have surveillance monitor and they're not surveilling anything? Wow, I will take that. So let's go case of the filched falcon. Case of the burning masks. Nug that the surveillance monitor and hit with Zilamplate Phoenix. Now they're on five mana. Hmm. Oh, they had Chorus to kill. Yeah, that, that I can't get around. And if they kill the Phoenix, they can bring it back. It's pretty annoying. Um, let's start with by demanding answers. I'm going to sacrifice this clue. I can get to the case of the Filched Falcon on three pretty easily once once I cast Fuss Bother. So I think... Sacking the clue and leaving myself up for a three drop is good because I think living conundrum might be good this game still I don't have a good way to answer the control magic on the phoenix unfortunately because they already have enough Evidence to assemble okay, they didn't have a play there I'm gonna attack I'm gonna draw and discard I think I discard deduce here because I want to go land number six, cast Fuss Bother. That is my plan. I could discard Living Conundrum, but I don't really, I didn't feel like I wanted to do that. All right, Fuss Bother. Let's bother. I will bother to make some tokens and, oh, Sudden Setback. Perfect. That can steal the Phoenix back quite nicely. And I've solved the case of the Filched Falcon and I'm on my way to solving case of the Burning Masks, which is kind of nice. Unscrupulous Agent. Uh, I have a lot of cards left. I guess I'm going to get rid of the Living Conundrum now. I think Out Cold will be a better play this game. Ooh, they're surveilling something? Do they not want it? They might want it. And, you know, let's exile the Living Conundrum here. And see if they have a follow-up play. Attacking with those. Uh, yeah, I'll block the Gorehound. I think that's fine. I think I'll block it with all three in case they have a removal spell. I don't know. All right, Gorehound down. I take one off the Phoenix. Draw. And I guess we'll go to attacks here. Attack with those. Loot with the Courier. Gadget Technician or Out Cold? Because uh, I want to keep the Sudden Setback. Hmm. I think I do discard Gadget Technician, though. Because now I can just pass the turn. It feels like they've got a play of some kind. Oh, Eliminate the Impossible. All right, well, I think in that case, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on top. Because I'm the owner of it, so I still got to make that decision. Before they got their clue, and they'll take, oh, I don't get to flip the case yet because they only took one, only one of those things hit. But now they're down to just a 1-1 one, one in play, and next turn I'm probably going to use case of the filched falcon here. Oh, no, I don't have a non-creature artifact. I need the clue off the, the out cold first. Okay, they get, they get to loot off their projector inspector. Um, I'm going to send with these. I'm going to loot here. Discard Island. And if they want to block the uh, Furtive Courier with their Inspector, I'm okay with that. I don't really have an answer. Oh, Murder. Okay. It's done. And then they go to 11, and they have one card in hand. I get to play a Phoenix here. Yeah, it sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> I have enough... 26 points of evidence in my graveyard, so I think I got enough to, to bring that one back. I guess the murder wasn't going to do much if the phoenix was there. Oh, really? All right, well, I'll block. All right. Unless they have a way to get rid of this out of my graveyard. No, it doesn't look like it. All right, I'll exile sudden setback, and we'll get free value off the phoenix, sure. Oh, they have destroy target tap creature. Well, it doesn't matter. I just bring it back again. All right, that was a concession out of frustration. Lamp-like phoenix took it home. On to the next. All right, I am on the draw, and this is all my, like, fiddly cantrips plus a galvanize. Sure. Certainly not in uh, 
the business of mulliganing this kind of hand. This is the kind of hand where shock is pretty nice because it just gives you a one mana play when you have all two mana plays. Like it's easy to, that way like on turn three, you can go shock plus deduce or something along those lines. But I'm happy enough with uh, this mix of cards as is. I do like decks like this. All right, I will keep opponent also kept. All right, land go. Red, white. Oh, reasonable doubt was a great draw. And them not having a play on two was huge. Because now if they play a face down creature, I could counter it. But look, this is so sick. They don't have anything. All right, well, in that case, I'll just cast deduce. I'll draw a card. I'll get a bit of an advantage because it was a nice little two for one. Play a land, pass the turn. And what kind of red, white draw are we, we up against here? Griff, not tracker. Um, I think I will reasonable doubt that because... I just am worried that I wouldn't be able to cast it later. Ooh, Furtive Courier, yeah, that I'll cast. If they just go land number five, play a face down creature, reasonable doubt doesn't do anything. I didn't even know I was gonna tap out for Furtive Courier, but that's another advantage. I don't really care if they kill this thing, yep. Lightning Helix into Case of the Crimson Pulse. Well, that that's a little dangerous because now they discard a card and draw two, but I'm just, I need to kill them before that card overwhelms me with, with card advantage. So I'm hoping that they don't have a good way to do that. Oh, all right. I'll play my Living Conundrum, even though I can't cast Fuss Bother Guaranteed next turn. But cracking a clue this turn, I think, was just too inefficient of a play. Now, if I draw a land next turn, I'll cast Bother, make some Thopters. But if I don't, that's fine, too. I would have loved to have a case in this deck. I had that last time I had the two Living Conundrums, and it was awesome. Well, they're still a ways away from emptying their hand, but they might be able to do it in a couple turns here. Um, let's leave my thing back for now. Cast Bother. Ooh, I like Sudden Setback. I think I like Harry Dronesmith too. And I'll pass the turn. They wouldn't be able to block if I attacked that effectively, but it's mostly that I want to have my 2-5 back to block their attackers. And uh, sudden setback could be good against Case of the Crimson Pulse once they get down to to flipping it. Absolving Lamasu, 4-3, no longer suspected. Good for you. Um, let's galvanize the Lamasu. Okay, they had no response. Interesting. They can't suspect my 2-5. Okay, I don't even know that it's really good to suspect my one one, but who knows? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna attack with the living conundrum as well here. It didn't seem like they had a combat trick, and I really would like to kill them before they get their case going. The two cards in my hand are also pretty good at doing that, though I guess so is sudden setback. So putting this on top and then making them redraw it, though that's not even like that effective. So at the beginning of our upkeep. Discard your hand. So there's no real way to make them discard this. Red herring. Oh, and they're going to make it a 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> okay. That's that's kind of funny. And they can't attack with anything else. Guess I'll take three. Draw. Mm. Make a thopter, and I'll attack with all my thopters. They go to 16, and I pass the turn here. And I, I unfortunately can't cast Sudden Setback plus Eliminate, but I can cast Out Cold plus Eliminate, which pretty good chance I want to do that at some point here. Mm. Ooh. They're on their last card in hand. Their case is... is getting close to being solved. So what's my play here? I think I'm going to cast out cold on the Hazda Vigilante and the person of interest. I want the red herring to attack because I would like them to have to draw a card and not flip their case. Because now what I can do is I can double block the red herring. 
and then they they're going to put the drone smith first and then maybe they'll pass but then i'll cast eliminate the impossible so now i'm not losing my drone smith and they have to sack this to draw a card so they have to play both those cards now in order for them to flip the case so if either one's a land they can't quite do it okay i don't have anything in my graveyard that matters though that is a little annoying just virtue of the fact that i'm trying to kill them with one one flyers Okay, and they didn't play. Oh, shock was an awesome draw. So let's let's go. Actually, I guess I just won't crack a clue. Shock the the Griff Knot Tracker. Attack here for eight. They have no good blocks. Their creatures are still locked down. And then I'm gonna pass. It's inefficient with the clues, but I would like to just leave sudden set back up guaranteed. If I crack a clue and draw a spell, it's gonna be pretty bad due diligence um yeah so they're dead now so i just bounce their token and then attack them for eight all right case of the crimson pulse was officially never solved and i get to get in there living conundrum still did a little work as a two five and uh that puts us at four and one we're, we're, we're cruising here on to the next oh i think we're gonna rank up too Boom, rank up to diamond tier four. All right, we're getting up there. All right. Battling here. And getting, getting on our way to the trophy. We're on the draw. Yeah, this looks totally fine. So one of my biggest takeaways so far is that Case of the Crimson Pulse makes Living Conundrum a totally real thing. This deck doesn't have the case, and... I haven't come that close to decking myself, but I've also won almost all those games that went pretty long, so I'm not too worried yet. We'll see. They milled two lands. All right, not bad. Mistway Spile. I'll wait on that one. Don't want to cycle eliminate? I don't think so, especially against a green deck. It feels like we could get into some big combats. But we'll see. We'll see. Will I get there on Living Conundrum? I mean, again, 2-5 Hexproof is not a complete brick. All right, here's a spot where on the draw and shock was particularly bad. Um, let's play Mistways by face down because it's so much more efficient to just play a face up gadget technician that I would kind of rather do that. I also would block this face down creature if they attacked me here. I don't think uh, the upside of flipping Mistways by is what I want to hang on to this game, given that I'm a bit behind on board already. Gadget Technician should help. Same with uh, Living Conundrum. It'll kind of depend on what they have here. Tin Street Gossip. Well, I don't really like that. Uh, I have Galvanize in Shock now. I think I'm just going to cast a face up Gadget Technician. And at some point, if I can draw two cards, I can Galvanize the Tin Street Gossip. They attack with this face down creature now. I'm just going to take it and they can flip up their stupid Blitz Hellion or something. There's just not much I can do about that. Oh. Mm. I'll, I'll go for the double block here. The Gadget Technician and the 1 1. I'm not that worried. It'll be a 1 for 1. Oh, they flipped up a Flourishing Bloomkin and that's all? They did not think I was going to block their 4 4. All right. Well, that. It's just kind of worked out great. And then they. Don't have a land out yet, so I can galvanize the Bloomkin. All right, I will take that. And you know what? I will even flip up Mistway Spy and go get my token here. Attack, get a treasure, or a clue, rather. All right, well, that board cleared up a lot better than I thought it would. I thought that we were going to just be dead, but I traded ga the Gadget Technician and Galvanize for these two. They got, a four they got two forests, though. So they got a good deal there, but, I mean, this Bloomkin was about to be huge, so. Topiary Panther. That's a little annoying, but I do have Out Cold, so let's draw for the turn land. So I think what I'm going to do is hit and then pass and out cold plus crack a clue and then set up a living conundrum to maybe start doing some blocking. Okay, out cold those two. Not much they can do about that, I wouldn't imagine. They can go bring back two lands if they want. <laughs> okay, 
and we'll see if they if they play another couple Panthers like if they have like more big drops then I, I'm not loving it. Ugh, Killer Among Us is pretty annoying. Shock is actually the best answer to that though, so because they're gonna choose one of their creatures as the super secret killer, and then I get a chance to shock in response to them targeting it. Draw, draw, all right, land, play Living Conundrum. I'll, I'll still stand send for one here. Pass the turn, and then now I have, I mean, Deduce was not a bad draw. I can, I get more card draw here, and I have some good tricks. Let's see what they've got, so. Mm. So they have three things. If they attack, I'm just going to go for the block. I don't really, ha I'm not so far ahead that I can afford to do otherwise. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that Topiary Panther. I haven't figured that one out yet. I feel like uh, if I find one of my Galvanizes, I'll be fine. I've got used one so far, but I have a bunch of clues here that make it pretty likely that I can get there. Uh, Lamplight Phoenix, okay. I'm not liking that they keep playing good cards. I'm just going to make my life harder for sure. And they're just going to pass. If they just pass, I guess I will deduce. Hmm. The coward's play. All right, well, I'll cast deduce here. Draw. Reasonable doubt is not looking very good right now. i got to admit that. Land. Uh... Actually, let's crack a clue. I think I can still cast all my stuff, even if I crack a clue here. Oh, and then now I can play case and still have all that up. All right, well, it does mean I don't get the, to have the case of the filched falcon go off immediately, but if I end up casting eliminate the impossible, I could. <laughs> so I guess they're going to attack with everything now. Oh, just those two. Interesting. I might... Hmm. I might double block the Topiary Panther. Oh, they're attacking with the tokens. Okay, well, in that case, I'll block. And I'll block the tokens. They, they're going to have to kill her among us here, I would imagine. I mean, if they don't, then I know it's the Merfolk. <laughs> if they... But... My guess is it's going to be... Oh, it was the Merfolk. All right, well, I'm going to try to shock the Merfolk. Hopefully that works. All right, so that takes out that. Then I'm going to eliminate the impossible, which keeps my Mistway Spy alive and reduces the amount of damage I take by four. So now I take five damage total. And I guess I don't crack a clue because I, I really want to flip Case of the Filched Falcon. Also, them playing an eight drop this turn would be pretty nice. World Souls Rage, X equals eight. <laughs> All right, no plays. I kind of hope to play, draw play. Oh, that actually works out just fine because I'm going to go demand answers, discard reasonable doubt, which isn't doing anything. Draw two. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to galvanize the panther because I already have drawn two cards here. Okay, we're, we're 19 cards. We're still pretty far away from decking ourselves, but... I'll hit for one. I'll pass. The case of the Filched Falcon is solved. They haven't played anything. Are they going to sack their Aftermath Analyst to get back two forests? No, they're not. I'm going to try to block the Phoenix with the clue from Falcon. I don't really think I have a better play. And then next turn, I'll cast Fuss Bother, hopefully milling two so I can get closer to, to zero cards. Because by the time I get to zero cards, I'll have my second Living Conundrum too. Oh, Glint Weaver. I guess the Reasonable Doubt would have been good. Okay. Well, I don't like this. I haven't used Sudden Setback yet. That would be a nice one to pick up. I've used two Galvanizes, one Shock. All right. Yeah, there. You got a 6-6 six, six Phoenix. I can't do anything about that. Uh, I'm going to take it. End of turn. Solve the case of the Filched Falcon. Shock, huh? Um... Let's cast Bother here. Eliminate the impossible. That doesn't do much for me. I think I can mill it. And then attack and 
I don't think attacking with Living Conundrum does a whole lot. So let's just attack for four with the 4-4 four, four pass. And now we're going to be on like chump block the Phoenix mode for a turn or two. Well, <laughs> I mean, I guess in perpetuity, I don't really have a, a way to do it better. Crack a clue, end of turn. We have 16 cards left. And I still have another deduce. I use my one fuss bother. Well, let's see. Let's see what they got. If they don't have a way to give trample, then I can block with the Mistway Spy. I guess I could technically quad block and shock, but that doesn't seem like a very good way to go about things. All it does is knock two counters off their thing. Are they going to mess with my 4 4? That's unfortunate. Gal the th another galvanize could be good. I think I have three in this deck. I'm, all my blue red decks run together at this point. Okay, are you going to do something here? What's going on? They have sufficient evidence. Are they going to... It looks like they have a fight spell. Maybe they have the plus two plus O oh and bite. And they're going to have their glint weaver take out one of my four fours or something. Or my four four flyer or something. And I'm currently probably going to chump with the Mistway Spy. I don't really have a way to bring it back. And having artifacts in play, I think, generally seems better. Though I guess at this point it might not matter, because I've already used Case of the Filched Falcon here. <laughs> okay, uh, opponent, you probably want to make some kind of move. You're just going to time out here. In a position where I, I would say they're winning, it kind of depends on their hand. If they don't have much in their hand... I don't hate my spot because I'm gonna. I still have these two clues to go through. I've got a bunch of chumpers, but if they have like a way to kill this four four, for example, then my clock just goes to to zero. So much like their clock, which is also going to zero right now. All right, timeout used. <laughs> it, it feels like they're just like they're 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 stuck. They like they have a play to make and they don't know if they want to make it and. They keep looking back and forth. I swear it's the plus two plus oh. Yeah, so that wasn't too hard, was it? All right. Uh, yeah, I don't have a way to stop that. Now they're going to attack. They can attack with both. Yeah. So I think I'm going to do is go block, block. And then end of turn, I, I guess I'll shock the Glint Weaver. Don't really have a better option here. Face down card. Oh, I'll shock the Glint Weaver in response. All right. Well, they had a fight spell and a face down creature, so I'm not loving my shot here. Mm. Furtive Courier, huh? Let's draw Case of the Burning Masks. Um. Yeah, I guess... I will kill the face down creature. I'll spend the extra extra mana. And honestly, I think I have to attack. It's kind of weak, and obviously I might lose if they kill my token, but the reason I wanted to attack with those two is I really wanted to flip the case of the burning masks so that if I get another turn, I get to go dig for something. Good game. After, like, using three full banks of time. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, you got me. All right. Unfortunate loss there, but uh, you know what? We still got gas in the tank. Let's keep rolling. All right, we're 4-2, and two, so 3-0 for the trophy. I think this deck's got, got a good shot at that. I mean, I like this hand. Shock into Galvanize, into Case, and then at some point casting Bother for some tokens seems pretty good oh snarling gorehound yeah well we'll shock that one i will say the living conundrum last game was pretty mediocre unscrupulous agent all right well i'm going to shock the gorehound and honestly i think i've probably been the living conundrum at this point i feel like the uh burn spells are going to be better pass the turn yeah, it just this deck doesn't go through its cards quite fast enough is what it seems like. Okay, they're going to play a face down card. Yeah, unfortunately I can't galvanize that. Draw. Face down gadget technician. And now, 
any land lets me uh, play a drone smith. I could also flip the technician here soon. I'm going to take it. I don't really know what they got here, but oh, it was the bone brew. Wait, why did they let me block? That's odd. Okay. Um, I'm going to pass and I'm worried about a combat trick because it's kind of weird to let me block. If you don't, oh, extract a confession. All right, well, I'm going to turn this face up and sack my 1-1. One, one. Okay, I'll block their 1-1. One, one. All right, well, I'm still going to go for this, I guess. All right, well, I take three, and then they eat their 1. I don't really know what's going on here, but I'll play a drone smith here. I'll wait a turn on the Lamplight Phoenix because I think something might go to the graveyard. I mean, Hunted Bone Brutes are a pretty messed up card. I will say that. All right, no plays. Let's send. Just nothing? Okay, I'll play a Case of the Filched Falcon. And I'll play a Lamplight Phoenix. The Phoenix doesn't have protection, but if they, they could have killed one of these, they would have, I assume. And if they play a Wrath, I can then get the phoenix back anyway case of the burning masks mm, they're at 10 oh i can just attack with everything and and cast f fuss not the not the normal mode but this puts them to one and my creature doesn't even die though i lose the counter on the on the thopter i suppose all right well that was a weird game but uh i'll, I'll take it or five and two oh, let's get to the last two rounds here. All right. I guess there's only two rounds if we win this round, but I'm going to hope for two. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm on the draw. Oh, really good hand on the draw. Shock into reasonable doubt is just an actual good way to 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 deal with the first couple plays of the on the opponent's side. Of course, they can have sequences where shock doesn't do that much. It's kind of hard for reasonable doubt not to do something in your opening hand. Point Mulligan to six as well. All right. Mistway Spy on turn one. Uh, I'm going to pass. I might shock that. It'll kind of depend on what they do this turn. Oh, well. I guess having shock was pretty good there. Okay, shock your Mistway Spy. And then now they're basically down a card because that thinking cap isn't doing anything. And then now I get to pass. Oh, I have demand answers plus Harry Dronesmith. I want to assemble that at some point after I counter this. Oh, I guess I can't counter this and also wouldn't if I could. Draw. Um, I'm going to play the Mistway Spy face down. Oh, are they going to reasonable doubt me? No, they're going to sack their wrench. I do give up the opportunity to cast reasonable doubt here for a turn, but... I just feel like it's easy for them not to have a play. Yeah. And then now I'm going to play the Drone Smith. And all right, they got to have a play this turn or this game is basically over. If they play a, like an inside source and they put thinking cap on it, you know, that that's like a real thing. Or they play Ezra Agency Chief or something. Private Eye. Yeah, Private Eye is good. They get to put a thinking cap on it. Okay. So now... Land, let's go ahead and turn the Mistway Spy face up and then attack with these two, hit for two in the air and get two clues and then just pass the turn. I don't need to cast demand answers here. I'm not like a rush and I want to leave up reasonable doubt in case they play something expensive and I'll probably just end up cracking a clue otherwise. All right, they can also hit me here. I'll take it. Mm. Market Watch Phantom, sure. I can't stop that, unfortunately. Okay, and they've equipped it. And no other plays. All right, let's crack the clue. Let's draw. And <laughs> ye old living conundrums. All right, let's hit for two. Let's pass. And I and my plan here is to cast reasonable to, or to cast a uh, out cold. Tap those two things, and then maybe Reasonable Doubt does something. Shock is looking a little weak right now. But Out Cold 
tap, tap. Let's go ahead and they play Hazda Vigilante. All right, reasonable doubt. And I will actually s suspect the Harry Dronesmith because I think that that's going to end up working out pretty nice. So let's play my Living Conundrum just to get more idiots onto the board because now we're just going to try to rush them down. Hit them down to nine, pass the turn, have six points plus a shock ready to go, and they don't have any blockers. They can play another card this turn. They clearly don't have lands in hand, but... Oh, you know, my <laughs> crack force of a 1-1, one, one, a 2-3 Menace that makes 1-1s, one, and a 2-5 Hexproof is really doing something. All right, do they have their own out cold? Maybe they do. I mean, they clearly have something. Lamplight Phoenix, huh? All right. Mm. All right, I'll make a, a drone smith or a drone. I'll send... Return target non land permanent to its owner's hand. Okay. And they get to surveil even, but. All right, so seven, eight mana. So I guess I just play Phoenix. I don't want that one countered. Then play the Drone Smith. And like I said, I'm not really in a rush to use demand answers here. If they kept a Wrath on top, I guess that'd be good. Oh, Steam Core Scholar. Yeah, I mean, they. They get to hit me for some damage if they want. But, like, because their private eye is about to trigger here. But given that I have shock out, I think it's going to be tough. I mean, I guess they get to, like, Steam Core Scholar can block Lamplight Phoenix. Private Eye can block Living Conundrum. Market Watch Phantom can block Drone Smith. But I, I do assume they're going to want to attack here. I mean, I might need something else. It's not, this game is definitely not just over. So they get to discard a Steam Core Scholar here. They're trying to decide if they want to discard two or discard a good card, basically. All right, they discarded two. Private Eye triggers on the Market Watch Phantom. And then they play another Market Watch Phantom. And they kind of they didn't want to attack, I see. Um, Let's draw with the clue. Or I guess I could have demanded answers first. Oh, eliminate the impossible is really great. All right. Let's discard a mountain. Draw two. Oh, and galvanize. All right. Let's go galvanize the private eye. And then shock the steam core scholar. And then attack with everything. And that is enough. Though I guess they could have, I could have also attacked and after they block shocked. Who knows? Either way, we're six and two, and uh, we are playing for the trophy. All right, last round here, one way or another. And I'm on the play with. This is an okay hand. I don't think I'm supposed to mulligan it, nor do I think I'm supposed to play a mistway spy face up. I just don't. I feel like this deck doesn't do damage that quickly that I I, I want to do that. And uh, no shocks or galvanizes, but, you know, I think... Oh, the drawing the second red helps, because now I have Gaze of the Burning Masks. I think this is okay. Right, I think what I'm going to do, actually, is lead with Furtive Courier. If they have reasonable doubt, that's fine. I guess it's worse against shock and galvanize, so that's a reason not to do it that way. Don't really know what to think when they go Thundering Falls into Double Forest here. Okay, face down card. Well, in that case, I'm going to attack. I'm going to loot. I'm going to discard an island. Happy enough trading. Okay, and then I'm going to play a face up gadget technician. Oh, I got a nervous gardener. Sure. And then now I've got play and flip mistway spy if they don't have a good block here. I feel like locks it, locks it on eavesdropper or something. I can, uh... Oh. Okay, I guess I'll flip the Mistway Spy. It's a five mana one one flyer. Make two, make two clues. Yeah, you know that that's okay. We take those. All right. So it looks like they're playing a, like a bunch of colors here. Yeah, they're getting even another plane. All right. So let's go play this face down. Certainly didn't draw anything that would make me want to change plans. Hit. They're at sixteen, and I get some some clues. All right. This was reasonable. 
I really need their their first play after ramping there to be something I can hit with Case of the Burning Masks. I don't think that's super likely. Yeah, they just played a Topiary Panther. Oh. Okay, well, I can sack... I can sack one clue here to try to draw Galvanize. Shock does not quite do it. Um, I'm actually going to attack here. They kind of have to block. And then I can go Case of the Burning Masks plus Case of the Filched Falcon. I could also shock, but I think that using my mana this way is going to end up being better. And then play the Case of the Filched Falcon. And then that flips. Both of my cases are solved now, which is nice. And then I get to make a 4-4 four, four flyer. They have a Glint Weaver here. It could be kind of annoying. That's the, the card I hope they don't have. Oh, a 6-7 Reach. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, Fuss Bother is really nice. So let's just play my land and cast Bother. Get Living Conundrum out of here. I didn't take Living Conundrum out because, you know, we've, we've gone this far, but uh, definitely the weakest card here. And, all right, they have another Topiary Panther, but they still can't really attack with the Rift Burst Hellion. Let's draw, all right, let's sack Case of the Burning Masks. If I hit out cold here, it's going to be so sick. Okay, what is that? Sudden Setback, eliminate the impossible. Demand answers, oh, we can just take Sudden Setback here. Because we can go Sudden Setback on the Rift Burst Hellion. I assume they're going to put it on top. You could actually draw with Clue in response to see to get new information before doing that. But, I mean, oh, Repulsive Mutation X equals zero. Oh, so I have to pay six to counter that? I guess I can't. Um, interesting. So now what? 14? I could use the case to make one of my creatures big. I don't think that's very good, though. So I think what I'm going to do, I'll throw away a 1-1 one, one flyer to deal four to my opponent. I think that's worth it in this spot. All right, they had a counter spell. That was pretty good. Play land, pass the turn. End of turn, I think I'm going to use the case to make one of my clues into a 4-4. Into a four, four. Jeez, okay. They can attack for 16. All right, that, that, that's, uh, they turned things around pretty quickly. Well, now I actually have to do this really unfortunate play of, I think I have to block the Ferox. I just don't, I don't think it really works for me to, to do worse. Oh man, and they had a, they had a trick and it's exactly big enough that I can't uh, use shock. All right. Nah, out cold still probably does it. <laughs> Oh, living conundrum. All right, let's crack this. Let's draw Harry Dronesmith. I'm at 14. So if I make... Yeah, I actually think I, I do Harry Dronesmith here. And attack. They block a real token. And they take four down to six here. It's going to be very close, and then they can attack me with everything. I'll block the Hellion and take 10, and then just hope to hope to draw something and hope they didn't draw anything. That The repulsive mutation into the combat trick was a pretty big swing. How cowardly are you going to be? <laughs> and at some point, I could also find, like, eliminate the impossible. Uh, that would be another one. Out Cold, of course, does the trick. Okay, they're attacking with everything. I mean, that's a very reasonable play, I think. I'll block the 6-7 and take 10. Down to 4. Or I could block the Ferox and shock it. No, I think I'll block the Hellion and take 10. I'm at 4, and then I'm going to be 1 point short of killing them. I still have my other shock in my deck. Tunnel Tipster doesn't do anything. Out Cold still does the trick. Oh, wow. They had two spells this turn. All right. All right. Shock, shock, shock. Um, eight mana. Okay, so let's go Lamplight, Phoenix, Living Conundrum. So Conundrum blocks Topiary Panther. I take one down to three. This chumps the Hellion. This chumps, this chumps, this chumps. Is that right? Do I, do I have to do it that way? Let's say take one down to three, block, chump. Chump, chump. I guess I don't need to chump the Tunnel Tipster. 
and but it doesn't matter if I attack here. So, all right, depending on what their face down card is, I actually still could very much win this game. I need them to attack with the Rift Burst Hellion and have this face down card not be something that like gains them life or does damage or anything like that. If they don't attack with the Rift Burst Hellion, it makes it a little bit more difficult. But if they don't attack with the Rift Burst Hellion, then I can double block the Topiary Panther with Conundrum plus Phoenix. Like Phoenix is actually a pretty good thing to have in play here. I guess I'll put Phoenix on the face down creature at this point, or maybe not. Yeah, I guess I have to double block the Topiary Panther and then chump the two, the four four and the two two, all right. So these two block Panther, block Ferox, block the 2-2. Two, two. All right. And they're going to kill the Living Conundrum first. And I will say, as good as Living Conundrum was in the deck that could actually deck itself, they've been a pretty big liability. Like, I scried one to the graveyard in this case. I surveilled it. And then the other one I drew. And, like, it's not like it's the absolute worst by any stretch, but it's probably worse than most cards I could have drawn instead. So, good thing to know. I have eight mana here. All right. And did they draw another card that does something? Mm, not really. All right, out cold. No, but deduce is kind of nice. All right, let's deduce. Mm, let's flash back the clue. Let's see. Land, land. Now... I'm pretty dead. Is it worth shocking the face down creature? I guess not. Oop, I don't want to attack. All right, pass the turn. Yeah, we lost the, the counter spell. Counter spell's good. The counter spell, it let them make two big plays in the same turn, which was pretty huge. Okay, so if they don't have a way to draw an extra card and make Jade an Analyst attack, what is their attack here? All right, they're attacking like that. I guess block block so how do I win this game four I guess I have to shock they're flipping their flourishing bloomkin into a five five oh okay well I was dead either way but all right you know six and three I think a pretty reasonable finish the losing the one the, the only one that really stung was losing to the stupid Aurelia's vindicator flip where like I'll land the next turn and I still could win that game, but them's the breaks. And uh, I thought this deck was solid. The living conundrums were bad. So look, let's take a look at this. So we had the two conundrums in a deck that had two deduce, two eliminate, demand answers, and a bunch of removal and some surveil. And it still wasn't really that close. Case of the burning masks even goes three deep. So without those, the deck would have been better, but I liked having a bunch of shocks, galvanizes, and deduces. I think that leads to a great deck. And Case of the Filled Falcon was awesome. The Spy was totally fine. Out Cold, Sudden Setback. Yeah, these cards all work really nicely, and I think blue red is a great color combination to draft in this format. Well, as always, I appreciate you hanging out. As I switch between this and Cube, though, uh, more Cube is certainly on its way. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.